things went well, things went smoothly. Uh, the military guys came and they filled up the the stadium, and everything went well. So I'm I'm sure that everyone is happy. Uh, we've got continuity that is going to take place in Zimbabwe, even if Mnangaba was to leave. There is going to be continuity. Uh, someone is saying no sound. <laughs> we still have no sound. Uh, someone say if we don't have sound. Say so someone say if we don't have sound. I think we have sound. I can hear myself. Uh, does anyone say we don't have sound? Okay, Let, let's continue. If I don't have sound, I'll delete this whole thing and, and I'll make sure that we, we get started again very soon. So as I was saying, we, we were observing and I was observing very clearly to see what would happen if Chuenga was left in charge. Muhad was not there and Chuenga was left with himself and Opam Chinguri, and I think he did very, very well. He has shown that he can become president of Zimbabwe. And also, the release of the guys who were in jail. I think that was a very good move. This must have been cleared by someone, and I think he cleared this thing. So I'm happy that at least in ZANU PF, there's going to be continuity. And this is cool. Uh, we're happy with the, the setup in ZANU PF. In terms of Twenga taking over, I think everyone can see that there won't be any problems if he was to take over, he did very well this week. And I think most Zimbabweans are quite impressed with the activities of General Chuenga as president. So let's see what happens. Let's see how much more opportunity he gets uh, to become president and to lead stuff within Zimbabwe. Right, then I want to go to the second story. So I'm going to be quick today because I'm not happy with my, my settings. Uh, Timba, the leader of the opposition today, was supposed to go to his house with um, court officials. So they were supposed to go to court and do indications. That is the information that I got in the morning. So I'm not sure if they've gone to the house of Timber to do the indications and to look at the scene because court officials and the lawyers had agreed that they were going to inspect what is happening over there. And so let's see tomorrow what would have happened if they have managed to go over there with the timber, timber needs to get out. He did nothing wrong. He has been cleared of the main charge. The only charge that is left is that one of gathering. And I'm sure they were gathered there for a bribe. Nothing has happened. Zimbabwe is not collapsed because of the gathering. So it's important for these guys to be released. Mr. Nyamakanga also, and also President Wekos Banda, he needs to be released so that we don't have any political prisoners in our country. Then thirdly, I want to comment on Jonas's comments about Central Intelligence Organization wanting to kill me. So I've had this information for quite some time, but what I want to say is that CIO guys, they're not, they're not killers, right? CIO, <laughs> CIOs, like the guys who work in CIO, they won't wake up and say, we're going to kill Gambakwe. That will never happen. I've met CIOs on a number of occasions, both in public and in private, and they're very intelligent guys. They don't do it. They are not criminals. So in, when I'm working in Harare, the only people that concern me are, are non-state actors. So that are people who are paid criminal elements and all, all that. But a CIO, I don't have a worry about a CIO. When I was in Zambia, uh, there were a bunch of people who were around me when I was shooting. I showed you a lot of those people. Most of those guys were CIO. I talked to one CIO guy who came to me uh, there when I was in Zambia, and he had a chat with me, and I was standing right next to him for quite a long time. There were there are all guys and non CIO guys. So the ones that hover around that are not working for the government, that's, a, that's my concern. I'm more concerned about people that are not working for government. So whether Jonas is telling the truth or not, my view is that Jonas is telling the truth that he worked for CIO. The names that he's mentioning there. Those are real CIOs. The locations that is mentioning, those are real locations. And in terms of uh, Isaac Moyo, the Director General of the CIO, what I would like to say is on the incident that Jonas is mentioning, when I was shooting that video, we revealed that there was a contribution taking place of money in the island. And I, I found out about that because obviously I've got people in Ireland who showed me that there was collection of money taking place. The only difference was that this was not 
because the government did not say they were going to take the body. So the statement that was contentious there was me saying that uh, the Moyo family is raising money because the Zimbabwe government has refused to repatriate the body. So I did get a call from members of the family, but not from Isaac Moyo, so from other members of the family who were furious that I say that statement, uh, that they, they were collecting money to repatriate the body because the government had not uh, provided the, the transport. Tenacity Janassi does not know this information because I don't talk to Tenacity Janassi and he does not know that someone from my family called me. And I don't think Isaac Moyo knows that someone from his family called me to say, why did we say uh, they're collecting money on behalf of uh, the repatriation of the body? Secondly, the young lady was in Ireland and people didn't know that she was CIO or family of CIO. So people were shocked to find out that she was a member or the family of the CIO director. So those are some of the things that I revealed on that day. But I don't know if that warrants a, a whole government agents sending someone to assassinate me. And I'm sure that if someone attempted something like that, they will really need Nangaba to sign off on my assassination. And I've said to you here uh, that I don't think Nangaba would ever sign an assassination on me. <laughs> but I, would, I don't think Mnangaba would sign such a thing uh, to, to say Gabakwe must be killed. That will never happen. And I don't believe it. And however, I want you to know something. Everything that happens in Zimbabwe is authorized by Mnangaba, including the people in the CIO. If they want to, to laugh, they have to first of all ask. Nangagwa. So there is no way that anything is going to happen to me without Nangagwa's permission. So I know that Jonas is not lying about what he's talking about, but these are things that were happening at operational level, not at Nangagwa's level. And if Nangagwa was to hear about such a thing, it will not be approved. I can assure you, Kuti, Nangagwa will never approve the assassination of a journalist, especially myself. Uh, everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> yes, everyone knows Kuti Nagaba is ruthless, but I don't think um, Nagaba can do that. He understands the game, he understands Kuti, what is media, and he understands the implications of going after someone like me. Uh, if Nagaba does that, so you never do it. And I, I want to just say, unfortunately, we've got some rogue elements within the, the intelligence agencies, including, I've shown you in the past how I got poisoned uh, by one young lady back in the days. Uh, that was when we started our media house and I was still in Johannesburg. I think that was uh, 2005 or somewhere there. Uh, one lady was involved in poisoning me without touching me. So these guys have got a poison that they use, that if you, they go near you, you, you are going to get poisoned. I don't know how they do it, but they don't touch you. You just get poisoned. And when I was in Zambia, unfortunately, just last month, something similar happened to me. And I don't like showing, talking about things that don't have evidence, but it's very dangerous, especially in terms of there are some wrong elements who are involved in poison, poisoning people. And you can easily and quickly see uh, that you've been poisoned. And some of the, the signs of this poisoning are very dangerous. They, they, they are very painful. So there was a time when I went home and I started bleeding on my chest and I don't know what had happened. And that was just from sitting next to someone. So these are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Very dangerous rogue elements within the, the state security. When I was in Harare, Someone came into my room. They didn't know I was there. You can go and check out the video that I made about it. And so the poisoning part is the most dangerous part. If you're not careful, uh, <laughs> I'm not paid the uh, There there is a, a bunch of guys who are involved in very bad things. And I don't think this is state security. So I, I'm sure there is someone else somewhere who is involved in other things. But I do not believe that these are official orders. So 
if we are talking of someone behind the scenes doing things, then that is what I'm talking about. But it's not something within, what you, you can say a CIO sits down in an office and says, let's go and kill Gambakwe. I don't think that happens. And I think there's another group that is involved in these kind of things. So thank you very much, everyone <laughs> for watching. And Diana Rutino Volume Wheel. Mboma Innocent, Manono Kera, Manono Kera noise. But I would like to thank everyone. Let me recap, and then we're going to fix this video so that it doesn't have all those gaps at the beginning. So let's start with what I said in the beginning. General Chwenga uh, was left in Zimbabwe. So General Chwenga has been president for the last few, few days, and he has done very, very well, more than expected. Uh, General Chwenga has been meeting different people. He has officiated at the National Heroes uh, Barrier of uh, Brigadier General Shadrack Ndabambi, and he did very, very well. The army came over there, and there were a lot of people. He managed to go through the whole process. His speech was massive. And what I think is that Zimbabwe is going to do well under a new president, under uh, General Chwenga, and I don't think he's going to be vindictive on the Mnangagwa family. So I'm starting to see a bit of light behind the tunnel in, in terms of succession in ZANU PF. Let's see how this goes. Especially now that people are starting to see that the 2030 slogan is not being accepted by the people. So it's done very, very well. And all the things that is officiated with uh, this week is, have gone well. So General Chuenga, most likely to succeed Munangaba and their succession might go well, not as we expected. Uh, could there be a lot of fights? So the, the factions are starting to collapse because Chuenga is showing that he's able to hold this thing together. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when Mnangab comes back. How is the relationship between the two? How is Mohadi going to fit into the whole plan? How is Opam Mshinguri going to fit in the whole plan? But Zimbabweans broadly and, and generally impressed by General Chwenga and how he's handled the acting presidents when he was the only one in the presidium who was there, uh, besides Opam Mshinguri, obviously. He is the only one who was in the country. And things went on normally. Everything was stable. So fantastic job by General Chwenga over there. Let's see what is going to happen this week. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I apologize for those breaks in the beginning. And obviously, we're going to sort it out. And I'll be back here tomorrow at 5 a.m. every morning. Friday is a big news day. Uh, we do a lot on Fridays. And tomorrow, Zimbabwe is playing Kenya in Uganda. So the Zimbabwe Warriors is playing Kenya in Uganda. We do not have a stadium. So our soccer players have to play outside the country. They have to play outside the country. So they are playing in Uganda. They are playing Kenya. And then they wait four days. And then they're going to play Cameroon. So this is what is going to be happening. And tomorrow I'll give you an update on Anavestia. Here, what has happened with her. So amazing stuff. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And a good night to you all.